Hey, Tanny fans. It is your editor in chief, Nicole Stewart, here, and we have one of my all time favorite actors. Uh, please introduce yourself to our TNE fan base. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, my name is Leonard Earl Howe, and uh, I'm honored and grateful to, to be here today. Leonard, it is our pleasure, really, honestly and truly, to have you. So this month is our No Limit um, New Year's issue, and we're really, really stressing all the different things that you as a person can do to really break down the barriers and limits in your life so that you can achieve the master qualm of life's um, opportunities and benefits that they have for you. And I think that you are one of the best examples of this and all the essence that it entails. Um, just let the fans know a little bit about some of the movies that you've been in and a little bit about your story and how you got into acting. And, um, yeah, let's start with that. Okay. Um, well, most folks will probably remember the character that I played in the barbershop film um, by the name of Dinka. He was the Nigerian uh, barber slash uh, worked the shoot stand and was very smitten with uh, Eve's character, Terry. Uh, so that is definitely one of, the, uh, one of the roles where I get a lot of notice. Um, and then through the years, I've done a lot of commercial work, uh, and so they've spanned you know, all over the states, and, and so folks usually remember some of the higher-profile commercials that I've done uh, through the time, um, and uh, along with Antoine Fisher, which was my first film directed by Denzel Washington, and now uh, currently I'm blessed to, to come on uh, every week on Kevin Can Wait on uh, CBS on Mondays at 8, uh, so that is that is a tremendous blessing for me as well. Uh, and, you know, for me, I I got bit by the, the acting bug early, very early at a at a young age. You know, I started out at uh, my church. We would do, uh, do Bible storytelling, and where you would kind of enact and dramatize the story. And 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 then I linked up with a nonprofit group on WLSI, where we would do Christmas plays every year at the Wilshire Ebell Theater. And, and so it really, it really got hooked into me then. And, and I remember my mom saying, well, you know, son, I, I want you to look into law or to, to the medical field. And now, I said, mom, I, I want to be an actor. And, you know, I was about eight or nine or so. And, and she not only encouraged it but supported it and, and really made sure I had those outlets to to explore, and it, it really has blossomed, and I was blessed to, to go to several several different schools where I had some dynamic dynamic teachers which helped help to hone my craft uh, from, from junior high to uh, my high school was basically the same high school that you saw depicted on, on the show, which is, that show was based on the high school in Gordia, New York, and so our school was the L.A. version called the L.A. County High School for the Arts. We were set on a college campus of Cal State L.A., and we did academics in the morning, and we did arts at night. And that was uh, college training at the high school level. You know, and went from there to going to a four-year conservatory. Cause, and by that point, I said, this, this, is, this is the path that I'm on, you know. Um, and it really has, uh, has been a path and a journey which, of course, it's had its it, it ups and downs, but it is one that I, 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 wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't give up for anything. Now, it's funny you say it has its ups and downs because, you know, uh, one of the things about um, being an actor or even in any industry when you really love something um, where jobs come in spurts, you know, sometimes you might be the hottest thing right now, and then other times you might, you know, not be as popular. How do you feel like, I know you when you started off, you said that um, a lot of people know you from the barbershop role that you play. How do you feel like that role transitioned um, your publicity and, like, where you, like, fell as an actor as far as, like, when you go on casting calls and you, you try to get new roles? How do you feel like that role helped to transcend your career? Well, it definitely gave me tons of exposure. 
um, you know, because it, the cast that we have, the Ice Cube, Cedric the Entertainer, um, Eve, and then the second one, Queen Latifah came in, and Michael Ely, and Troy Get we, we had a full array of, of great actors that um, I, I got to ride along with, and it, that exposure... Uh, not only to the public, but to uh, the casting world, producers and directors, uh, took notice, you know, and along with just being able also to dive into more character work as far as, you know, my character being from Nigeria, still had an accent. Um, now, I did find, you know, after that, that uh, there are a lot of lovable characters that I was, uh, auditioning for, you know, when, and it, you know, it took work from my, my management team and my agents to let uh, the casting folks know, hey, you know, there are some, he's, more, he's a, a more versatile actor than that as well, and he can dive into some other roles and, and, and showcase some other skill sets in that way. Uh, and so it's, through that time, you know, over time and being patient and, and continuing to go, it, it's now allowed for me to kind of spread my wings and, and, and let them see some many more different facets of, of, of the talent that I feel I've been blessed with. Now, you also mentioned that um, you had the opportunity to work with the Denzel Washington on your first film, um, Anton Fisher, that was based out of, uh, for people who don't know about Anton Fisher, I'm from Cleveland, so you know, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and last month we, um, we talked with Martin, who was in The Magnificent Seven with Denzel, and he just really talked about how he's just so present when he comes to work, and it's really you know, definitely a different type of environment being um, amongst greatness. Um, what are some actors or other mentors that have inspired you that you have worked with that you feel like have really left an impact on the way you go into a role um, in your work ethic and how you work when you're on set? Well, you know, um, Denzel sets a precedent. Um, not only was I blessed to be in a film that he is in, but also that he was directing. And so there was, I feel, just even another level of, how do I say it? It's another level of, of I guess, focus from him and in, intent and in wanting to tell this story. Uh, and so being able to be under his direction and watch that firsthand. Uh, I mean, it it it, it 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 compares to none other. You know, he he is the quintessential uh, actor with with how he prepares and and what he brings to roles. And and so, you know, I was I was under that tutelage um, in that first film, uh, and then. You know, I've over the time been able to work with some not only great directors but great actors. Uh, uh, when I worked on Long Ranger with uh, Gore, Gore Verbinski and uh, Johnny Depp, you know, just watching Johnny Depp transform, you know, into uh, a different character from film to film, especially in that project. You know, it, it those were were just the type of things that uh, just being able to almost lose yourself in, in a role. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you sit back, you learn, you watch, uh, and you almost kind of just store in your bag all those little gems uh, as folks work through their process. Um, and so they're, they're, throughout my career, there's been, uh, there's been an array of, you know, I just uh, felt my, uh, did in the Bahamas called Live Cargo. Uh, I got to work a bit more closely with Robert Wisdom, Bob Wisdom there, and he he was in Barbershop too, and that's where I first met him. And but we got to spend some spend almost a month in uh, in Bimini, Bahamas, uh, and just he his career is 
is expansive. And, you know, just to to work side by side with him, someone who I've been watching over the years on The Wire and, and so many other projects, um, just to kind of have him take me under his wing, you know. Um, I, you know, <laughs> something standing here at this holiday time, I am truly, truly blessed. And truly thankful for uh, for this path. You know, it, it, it. I say my faith has has kept me patient through it all, and trusting that uh, you know my time will come. You know, that's one of the things in this business is you got to trust that your opportunity will come. Yeah, I couldn't have said that better because, you know, a lot, like you said, uh, your opportunity will come and when you have the the chance to work with people. And like you said, uh, you worked with him as well on Barbershop. So that leads me to my next question. How important is it when you're on a job um, or you're working uh, a film or sitcom to network while you're on set and, like, get involved with getting to know the other characters and other actors um, who are participating in your role? How important is networking to um, future um, booking? You, you know, I the uh, for the work environment, I don't necessarily reference it as network. Um, I reference it as as building relationships. You know, this life is is about relationships, and so. It so you know in in that work environment I think in the rest of networking it's like oh, okay let me see what I can what we can do and what we can build and and I feel in in that in in that environment it's more about let me just get to know you let me know um, who you are what your makeup is and build this relationship and then if something else may come of it so be it but. If we don't have a something established to create a foundation, then then all we're thinking about is how we can network something, and and that uh, I feel like that can be a bit fleeting, you know. Um, but it it when you take the moment and take the time to interact and get to know someone, and and then that gives you even so much more to to fall back on. Um. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's kind of how I see it. You know what? I couldn't agree with you more. I'm a big, you know, I'm from the Midwest, like I said. Um, so I'm really big on like relationships and um, the feelings and energy you get from people. Energy is very big with me. Um, one of the people who's on the cover this month is um, Street Master Gano Grills, um, mm. who. Mm. Um, I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Gano Grills, I know, like, in the early 90s, he did a lot of um, TV shows like um, like Oz and yeah, like, yeah. Um, Law yeah, & yeah. Order. Yeah. So um, Gano, he has a series that we'll be going to that will also be featured in this month's issue, um, The Big Picture and um, Kundalini Activation. And really what it does is it kind of helps you to have a better relationship with your ancestors and with your thought process to have a better idea of who you are because I feel like once you really know who you are, then you know the kind of intention you want to have in life, and when you know what kind of intention you have, then you're able to build better relationships with people from a genuine standpoint where people really want to invoke and involve themselves in your energy. Very Um, true, very true. So, like, I say all that just to say, like, with this being a No Limit New Year, what are some different ways that you can develop your internal energy um, within yourself that you found to be true for you um, to build these relationships with people from a genuine standpoint so it doesn't come off like networking, so it comes off Mm -hmm. like a real relationship? What are? Give me, like, an example of when you – knew yourself as your highest self and you built a relationship with somebody and what came from that relationship. Um, uh, Inevitably, not even like something you were going after, but this just naturally kind of formed because of your intention. Well, you know, I can say um, 
one of the first ones that comes to mind is Michael Ely. And we connected very early on in the process of rehearsal for the barbershop film. And there was a connection there that was just clicked right off the bat, you know, and he he was kind of like a big brother to me. Um, and we just just had a, a vested friendship, uh, one where, you know, we would talk on different topics and, and, and give, give advice back and forth. And so then the friendship has grown through the years, you know, where uh, I've been able to, to meet his family and, and just uh, watch as he, his career has taken off. You know, there, there have been so many, many high points to it. And then he's also been able to share some of his, his experiences and knowledge uh, from his path and journey that, as I've come along, have now been able to help me. You know, he was had a had a TV show long before I was considered to be a series regular, and so he some of those those just notes and tools that in the work process and and, uh, and being in a working in a different city, you know, that he was able just to, to advise me on so that when my time came, I was prepared. You know, one of the biggest things was just, hey, make sure you save your money. Make sure you put something aside because either when you're on, when you're on a break from the show or when, when the show will inevitably end, uh, you need to make sure that you have something to live off of, you know, um, and that is that you know that's one of the first ones that that comes to mind for me of of just a just a friendship relationship that that, that has that not only spanned the, the the years but that has been so so vital and important to my life. Now you mentioned you mentioned the weekly sitcom. What is some of the workloads of um, an actor? on a weekly sitcom have to go through? Because like, you know all these people, they're like, oh, I want to be a movie star. I want to be uh, a TV star. Well, tell the people some of the things that come along with some of those dreams that you want. Like, tell them what they have to do. <laughs> yeah. And it's, 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 still, it's still a lot of work. It's still a lot of work. You know, it's, it's still like a nine-to-five, and and you are uh, – you come in on Monday, you have the, the table read, and then you – you're working on your part. You're doing the different changes are coming about. And you're you're steadily trying to create and and with those changes and bring out those nuances. So it requires a lot of homework from you to bring in new stuff. Um, and it is it's you know it's time consuming. It it it's vested. It, how would you how would you say that the difference from doing a movie? What's the difference in the sitcom between doing a a sitcom and doing a movie as far as like the workload and what you have to do as far as preparation? Mm. Well, you know the the preparation process uh, between the film and the and say this uh, multi camera sitcom is that the the sitcom almost is like a one act play every week. It's like a new play that you get and we're putting it together and then we're gonna put it up on its feet and then put it before the audience, you know. And so you have to really be on with the film, the script is generally already set. They might make a few changes here and there and then you're coming in. So you you have a lot more alone time uh with a film where then you're coming in and bringing the work and you might have some rehearsal there. But they, the thing I was going to say is that even in the midst of that, um, when you love what you do, it doesn't necessarily feel like work. You know, when you are enjo I really enjoying agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like when you make your passion your paycheck, you don't need no vacation. That's, uh, that's, that's my life. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, it that time doesn't feel as taxing. Nice. 
No, so, uh, I mean, I know you're a busy man and there's a lot going on. I'm just going to ask you this last question. Uh, what final tips or advice do you have for inspiring actors um, to, or people out there that just want to have a no-limit new year? What advice do you have for these people to get involved and inspire them to go out there and make it happen for themselves? Well, for the actors, I say, you know, keep the faith. Um, I always, especially when young actors come up to me, I tell them, get into a class, study, 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 because it's a craft, and you want to be better at it. You know, I always reference any other field um, from sports to medicine to law. You know, any other field, folks are studying and working at it, you know, and a lot of times as, as uh, in this entertainment field, folks wake up and say, you know what, I want to be an actor. And that's, that's all well and good, but make sure that you are vested in what you do. Make sure that you are taking the time to, to want to be the best at it, you know. Um, and I say for this new year, 2017, you know, the way some folks look at the, this past year, I'm grateful for each and every day. Uh, you know, I, I am, in two days, uh, will be my mom's birthday. And if she was still on this earth, she would have been 80 years old. And, um, and so I try to make sure that each and every day I'm stopping and giving thanks and, and asking for guidance throughout that day, you know? Uh, and so that's where I strive and encourage others to strive moving into a new year is if we take that time on each and every day, then when you're five months into the new year, I think you'll have a better out, a, 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 um, a more joyous outlook on what has passed, you know? I totally agree. Thank you so, so much. Um, let the people know where they can follow you and stay connected to you through social media and your website. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I am, uh, I'm, I'm now very present on the social media. It took me a little minute. Um, on the Instagram, I am Leonard Earl Howes. On Twitter, uh, it's Leonard. You can look. It's probably under Leonard Earl Howes, but it, I think they made me shorten it to Leonard E. Howes. Um, and that's H O W Z E, and uh, you know, come out. Certainly, that we have um, right now. You can see me on Kevin Can Wait, uh, CBS Mondays at eight, and uh, you can look on Netflix for True Memoirs of an International Assassin. Great fun action comedy, a little Netflix and chill time, and uh, and some more projects to come. And I uh, I thank you, Nicole, for having me. Um, I'm glad to be a part of it and say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to, uh, yes. to all. Yes, to all. That's right, guys. You heard it here. You heard it on TNE Magazine. Um, please feel free to press that subscribe button so you make sure you never, ever miss um, any of our future interviews and messages and inspirational stories to come in the future. Um, all the information that you mentioned below um, will be in our description. So make sure you check that out as well and read the full extent article on what I got and gathered from this interview with this amazing, wonderful actor. All right, guys, take care.